Hey guys, this is Chris with Half Chrome. Today I'm going to talk about the Mavic Air 2's sensor, specifically about its HDR recording capabilities. I thought it was too much to throw into one video uh, all about the sensor, so I'm going to do it in two parts. First, we're going to talk about HDR, which is really what the sensor is best at. Uh, next video I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about the 48 megapixel. Is it 48? Is it 12? Well, it's kind of both. I'm going to talk all about that in my next video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. In the meantime, I don't have the drone, you see, hands-free here. Uh, Jack has it. He just made a video comparing it to the Mavic Mini, and we got more coming up. So we've got more footage we know what to do with right now. We're putting it all together. I'm going to be comparing it to the Mavic 2 Pro coming up after I get my 48 megapixel video done which I'm hope to, hopefully doing in the next couple of days. But first, let's talk HDR. Okay, so what is this sensor all about? It's 12 megapixels, it's 48 megapixels. Well, what they did is they call this a quad bear filter as opposed to a normal bear filter, which I think is just the double green, blue, red array of um, colored pixels that are used on a normal image sensor. And what they did is they split each little pixel up into four parts. Now, why is that important? Well, when you uh, take a 12 megapixel sensor that's 4 by 3 ratio, you divide each pixel in two, suddenly you have 48 megapixels. So you double it in both directions. Now, that also means each pixel gets one fourth of the light. I'm going to talk more about that in the next video, as I mentioned, but as you can see here, sometimes we see a little bit of effect there. And DJI does advise that you only use the 48 megapixel mode in ideal lighting. So what else can this sensor do though? What is it really good at? What it can do is with the pixels split up into four parts with not a lot of masking or dead areas between those pixels is it can stop recording your video in a portion of the pixel and keep recording it in another. So you can effectively get two different shutter speeds within that given frame. And that's what they're able to do to record this HDR uh, video. Now they, in theory, they could record, let's say, two pixels for a really long time, then one shorter, then one shorter. They could do it four different uh, amounts. So that's where the real magic comes in, is to use one four pixel, one quad pixel, to be able to split that up and record for different durations in that without really making any other big sacrifices to video quality. All right, so let's start off by looking at some of these photo comparisons here. We took uh, pictures with the normal mode and then took the exact same picture HDR. Now picture really isn't necessarily the magic is. They're probably doing the pictures, the photographs the same way most everybody does. You know, your iPhone, your Android phone, they're all doing HDR, taking a bunch of pictures in a row and merging those exposures. So we're not really sure that they're taking advantage of the sensor here, but let's anyway take a look. The results are pretty good. All right, so in this first example, I got it up in the air in an extreme lighting condition. Uh, we see a sunset and you can really see the advantage. We see some new clouds show up. Uh, the foreground still looks good in the HDR. Uh, looks better even, a little more color, but really it's where the clouds come in. The sun, sky isn't all washed out. And so really taking advantage there. Next up is my only example I'm going to show in this video of 48 megapixels. And you can really see the disadvantage. The sky looks identical to the standard single uh, photograph image, but the foreground is just really dark. So, you know, maybe there's some extra resolution there, but you're not going to really enjoy it. Uh, it's going to be hard to fix this image. You're way better off just sticking with either a standard or even better, the HDR image in this extreme lighting condition. So the next one you're going to see is actually one I created. I use the five exposure, auto exposure bracketing AEB mode on the Mavic Air 2 to do this one. So I took these five pictures and as you can see, none of them really jump out at you as being great. They're all a little washed out. The one on the right obviously way too dark, the one on the left overexposed. And I created my own HDR image in post-processing here. Uh, a lot more work to do this. I think you could probably get a very similar effect by tweaking the HDR image straight out of the Mavic Air 2. But anyway, this is what you can do in post uh, but with the auto exposure bracketing. And you can do this with other drones like the Mavic Mini as well. All right, so let's see how I could take this picture. So this picture, you might recognize the scene, but a different night, way cooler sunset. This one was actually before DJI had released the smart photo mode. And smart photo mode 
is how you access the HDR capability. The Mavic Air 2 is capable of recognizing the scene and what kind of picture it needs to take. At night, it's going to take a hyperlight image. Here, it's going to take HDR. And even in normal lighting situations, it'll usually give you an HDR image. Sometimes it looks very much like the regular image. But there's no real disadvantage uh, often just going with that smart photo, or at least taking both and seeing what you like better. So how did I do this one? This one, again, was before I knew about smart photo, before it showed up in the menu. We got this drone early. So I did, again, the auto exposure uh, bracketing, merge the images myself to create this. And here you can see those five pictures that I got. And each one, I mean, the one on the right, it sees nothing in the foreground, but really gets that sunset. And you merge it together, you can really get the best of all worlds. And that's what the HDR photo does as well. So next up, this is really what the sensor and the drone are all about, which is HDR video. Any camera can do HDR photos. There's no real magic there anymore. The magic here is in HDR video. So let's take a look. So in this first one, you can see on the right, we got the HDR video. You see more color, more illumination in the foreground. In the sky at the very top, you see clouds that aren't even there on the left. I did these shots back to back. They're only about a minute apart. So it's the same scene, two very different videos that you can get out of it. And there's no doubt in my mind, I prefer the HDR. Now what's cool is with the extra color you get in the sky, you can take that even further if you want. And that's what I did here. So I upped the saturation, the vibrancy a little bit. And that color that wasn't even there on the left, you're able to enhance it even further in the video on the right. And that's just what it's at. If something's just not there in your recording, there's nothing you can do with it. We got the color. I used it. Maybe I went too far with it. I don't know. The point is you can play around and you have much more to work with with the HDR video. So in this one here, you can see another example side by side, shot just a minute apart, uh, did this panning shot. I just wanted to see the sun. It was kind of a dramatic sunset, but that sun not really masked by any clouds. And you can see how much bigger it looks on the left. You really see this yellow thing on the right that looks like the sun. On the left, it's all blown out. Um, and you don't get nearly as much detail or as much color or as much detail in the foreground. The trees all look really dark and grainy. Uh, you can see some of that in the HDR. I would argue it's a little less grainy and you can certainly see more detail. All right, so this is at that same location taking off. I don't know if you read Spanish or not, but you don't need to be a Spanish expert to know what that sign says. Nobody's having fun these days with the COVID-19 around. So it took off. I just wanted to show you this one because it has really cool uh, flares from these lenses and is really colorful. So all the colors in the sky just flaring out. And again, in HDR video, I did enhance this one a little bit more uh, with some saturation in this case. In this next side-by-side -side example, you're going to see this shot again and again coming up in uh, more videos we're doing. We flew everything through this gazebo doing a side-by-side -side comparison compared to the Anafi, the Mavic 2 Zoom, Mavic 2 Pro, Evo. We got all our drones out there and uh, flew them through there. Oh, the Mini, don't wanna forget about the Mini. Did the same exact path to do side-by-side. -side. And here what you're looking at is the normal video on the left, HDR on the right. Now these are really ideal lighting conditions. The sun's almost straight up in the sky as you can see in the shadows there under the gazebo. Nothing super special, but we will see some differences in the HDR. And again, I kind of prefer it. All of this, by the way, shot in 4K. So the color in the sky is the main thing you notice. There are a couple more clouds shading the scene on the right, but the color pops. It's a little more aquamarine over there on the right. Um, you would have no complaints with the video on the left, but on the right, you know, at the end of the day, I just kind of like it more. I think I'm going to be using this HDR video quite a bit. All right, I saved the best for last. So I woke up one morning early, it was maybe 5.30, I woke up, I looked out the window and there's fog everywhere. I'm thinking this is maybe an opportunity. So I went over to the barn, which is the same place you saw in the last scene. And uh, sure enough, the sun was popping up over the horizon and get this really crazy cool effects with the fog and the sunrise. So let's take a look. On the right, you can see more color, what I talked about before, the smaller sun, it's a circle, people. It's not a blob. And we can see that in the HDR video on the right. We got more color. We've got more details in the sky. And it's just a better shot. It's still really cool. I mean, you can't really mess with this scene with the fog. But you're just better on the right. 
This next one, I redid it again. I enhanced the saturation and the contrast a little bit. Everything was so white with all the fog. So I thought a little more contrast would help. Um, and this looks just really neat. You know, the redness over the houses there and the fog. Again, you can see that sun and the detail and the color that you get in the sky is just really awesome. And uh, because I like that one so much, I'm going to finish out on it. I'm going to show you the whole thing again, full screen. This is just the best shot I've got. HDR, it's the way to go. It's the real benefit of this quad bear filter and the Sony sensor on the Mavic Air 2. I can never remember. Is it Mavic 2 Air, Mavic Air 2. I've got to pause and think about it. Anyway, make sure you subscribe. Check out the next video I'm going to do. It's all about the 48 megapixels. There's a couple things you really got to know about the 48 megapixel sensor and how it works on the Mavic 2 Air. Mavic Air 2. So come back and visit us again. Subscribe so you don't miss that video. I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.